Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, I thought my dog was in here. Okay, Mike's on. <clears throat> Output projector, who are we looking at? Hey, employee 13. Okay, one second. Man, I just had the most amazing shitty sandwich. It was the best I've ever had in my life. Okay. Okay, Leon, you have your handgun, an empty shotgun, 27 shotgun rounds, a film roll, a magnum ammo, a magnum, another film roll, and handgun bullets, and a club key. What are you going to do next? No, I made it. <laughs>
Time to reload the shotgun with some of those rounds. I don't want to be caught off guard with an empty gun. I should also check if there's a dark room nearby to develop these film rolls. They could hold crucial info. The Magnum's a keeper for sure, especially now that I've got the ammo. It's my ace in the hole for any more surprises. As for the club key, if there's a door I've missed, I need to track it down. I'll keep the handgun loaded and ready too. It's been a reliable friend so far. Once I'm all set, I need to keep moving. Explore any uncharted areas and stay on the lookout for that gear. I've got puzzles to solve and a clock to fix. Let's make every bullet and clue count. On your way to that dark room that is just under you, uh, you're in the second floor west wing stairwell. There is a statue of a man holding a red jewel and the inscription on the statue has something written on it. It says the god of the sun and the god of the moon, their gaze upon me is the only thing that can release the red soul. Sounds like I've stumbled onto another piece of this madhouse's puzzle. Gods of the sun and moon. Huh? Classic Raccoon City PD. Nothing's ever simple. All right. If their gaze is what releases the red soul, that's gotta mean light. I need to find a way to cast some light on the statue or position something to reflect light onto it. I'll have a look around for any movable light sources or reflective objects. Maybe there's a switch or mechanism that'll shine some light on this godly duo. Once I figure out how to get that jewel, I'm making a beeline for the dark room to develop these film rolls. Let's solve this celestial riddle. Grab that red soul and get one step closer to cracking this case wide open. That's a good idea, man, but there are no switches or lights, but there are two gays, like two gay men, looking away from this uh, sexy chiseled statue guy, and on the opposite ends of the room, there are indentations on the floor of the tile, miscolored tiles that uh, kind of depress in the floor. <laughs> oh no. All right. No switches. Just a couple of statues with some questionable orientation and pressure plates. Eh, wall, this puzzle just got a lot more hands on. If those statues need to face Mr. Universe over there, I'll have to move them onto those pressure plates and see if that gets a reaction. I'll push those statues onto the miscolored tiles and line up their gaze with the chiseled dude. If the gods have to look at him to release the red soul, let's give them an eyeful. Time to get these statues moving. Once that's done and I've got the red jewel, it's off to the dark room. Let's solve this and see what secrets this place is still hiding. Now, do you want to push it onto the miscolored tile, you know, that kind of sinks into the floor? Or do you want to push it a mile down the hallway for no reason? Hell, if the floor's got miscolored tiles that sink in, that's gotta be the ticket. No point in pushing this thing around for shits and giggles. Let's line up the statue with those tiles and see if these gods of sun and moon are feeling generous today. I'll push the statue onto the miscolored tile that's indented, get those gays to lay their eyes on Mr. Chisel, and hopefully that'll pop out the red jewel. Time to do some heavy lifting and get this puzzle squared away. If this works, it's one less riddle between me and the way out of this godforsaken place. Let's get pushing. Well, what do you know? The guy released his grasp on that red jewel like a uh, un... I don't even know. Sexual innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like our friend the statue was ready to part with his shiny treasure after all. No innuendos needed. Just a good old-fashioned push to the right spot. Now that I've got the second red jewel, it's back to those virgin statues to see what they're hiding. With both jewels in hand, 
It's time to complete this part of the puzzle and get that much closer to figuring out this nightmare. Let's slot these jewels in, see what happens. Did you guys know that? And keep moving. There's a clock that needs fixing, and I'm the only handyman left in this horror show. So, if we were to solve that puzzle before reading or doing the virgin shit, it would say red jewel. But now that we know what to do, it says virgin heart. This is kind of why I don't want to reset him because he's got so much knowledge on what he's done before. <laughs> like he, he, it's a price we're paying. Like he's boring and just, uh, I don't know. He's not really, he hasn't told any lies. <laughs> I think once we get to the sewers, we, we reset everyone. And so they're like, back to being quirky it's a catch 20 exactly it is but then we also keep them going and they'll slow down and they'll get even dumber and sometimes that's where like hilarity is <laughs> I can't believe how long it's taken them to get out of the RPD. Both of them. We're on stream five now. Okay, you put both red jewels into the virgin's hearts. You fisted those fist size holes and it opened up the king's chest and it gave you a king plug. Do you want the king plug? Do you know where it goes? Absolutely. I'll take the king plug. Looks like I'm collecting chess pieces in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Because why the hell not? The plugs have got to be for some sort of locking mechanism around here. Probably that door in the basement I've heard about. A door with chess themed locks. That's where these plugs must fit. Let's grab this king plug and head down to the basement. It's time to put these pieces in place and see what doors they unlock. If I'm lucky, it'll be a straight oh, shot to solving this puzzle fuck. and one step closer to getting out of this place. Time to move out and see where this game of chess leads. I'm doing it. We're making the long ass trek to put this one king plug in. It'll buy us time to get closer to Claire. And he's someone's finally making some moves to get out of the fucking RPD. <laughs> Sherry with Dora the Explorer. Remember when this trek was just like so fucking excruciatingly long as a kid? You're like, oh, I'm gonna go all the way fucking back. Now, today, no one can be bothered with fucking web swinging across New York. They gotta do fast travel and fucking web wings flying shit. Dude, if I ever like go to your stream and you fast travel or we're friends in real life and I go over to your house and you fucking fast travel in a game, that's the last time we ever hang out. <laughs> I was so fucking mad when I discovered fast travel in Red Dead. Uh, I think it was Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, the first one. I never beat the second one. 
but I played like halfway through that game and I was loving it. And then I found out that campfire fast travel shit. I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm so fucking mad. I, I wanted this game to like force everyone to live the rugged life of a cowboy. <laughs> No, miss the beginning. Oh no. Um I I fucked up the beginning. You didn't miss anything. Okay, Leon, you inserted the king plug and you still have to insert the knight, rook and bishop. Uh, so the virgin statues were guarding the king plug. Makes sense in a twisted raccoon city kind of way. I'll definitely take that plug. It's one more piece of the puzzle solved. As for where it goes, it's got to be part of that chess-themed lock mechanism I found yeah, earlier we in the sewers. Fucking figure this out. The king. Are you retarded? You already solved that uh, puzzle. You need the knight, rook, and bishop. So what are you going to do now, you know? You still got to explore the precinct. It's censored. Shit. My bad. Got mixed up with all the craziness around here. All right. No more sewer detours. I've got the king plug now. But I need to focus on finding the rest. Time to comb through the precinct more thoroughly. I need to track down the knight and bishop plugs. There's still what unexplored you, territory here. And any one of those areas could be hiding what I need. Let's scour the precinct. Check every room, every corridor, every nook and cranny. The answers are here somewhere, and I'm going to find them. Time to get serious and hunt down these remaining plugs. Okay, you are currently on the first floor east wing of the precinct. Uh, do you have any idea where to go, what to do? All right, first floor east wing, time to strategize. I haven't fully explored the second floor west wing yet, and there might be something there I missed. Given the way this place is laid out, there could be rooms or clues that I've overlooked. I should head to the second floor west wing, check out any unopened doors or unsolved puzzles. Maybe I'll find the knight or bishop plug there. You already have the bishop and rook plug. What the fuck is wrong with you? Have you been drinking on the job on your first day? Also, you've fully explored the second floor west wing. <laughs> fuck! My head's spinning with all this plug talk. No more booze-fueled brain farts. I've got the bishop and rook plugs, so I need the knight plug. Got it. Since the second floor west wing is a bust and I'm spinning my wheels, I need to rethink my approach. Maybe it's time to retrace my steps. See if there's Negative something I missed in the other areas, like the basement or the first floor. Let's focus on any locked doors or unsolved puzzles that could be hiding the knight plug. No more distractions. I need to get this right. Time to double down and search the precinct like my life depends on it, because it probably does. Without holding his hand, I'm going to show him a picture of this map. Maybe he can figure this out. I'm not even going to tell him, like, the legends of the map. Okay. Screenshot. This is the first floor map of the RPD. You've How reached the current usage cap for oh GPT-4. Every try time with the image, does the image like amp. use too much brain power?
We are 40 minutes away from Claire. You know what? We're dumb dumb braining this. We we don't have any crucial puzzles coming up. I'm switching to dumb dumb Claire. What time is he coming back? 126. He why is he This is weird. He's been uh, activating earlier than Claire, but we use him later. Reaction videos. <laughs> oh man i yeah dude you guys just want to drink and watch a um fan film <laughs> it's it's always risky watching fan films though because then they play that fucking licensed music and ruin my whole life yeah no i don't want to watch any fan films hmm I'm going I'm going to go dum dum on them see if they we can't just get them out of here and then by the time they're back they'll reset. <laughs> Seen the video Arclay? Yeah, I have it. I have I have every fucking fan film you can think of. Julia and I were fucking hundreds hours deep watching every single fan film we were gonna do our undead oscars we were gonna make a like re uh, award video <laughs> like best best fucking leon best claire best tyrant in fan films stuff like that what do we have where is it yeah i have like 300 fan films on my computer um, yeah, I have Arclay right here. It's good shit. We got a gunshot victim at four Lincoln Lane. Roger on you, one to one. <laughs> um this this video is way too good though like this production writing acting it's you know this was concept for some they wanted i think they were heartbroken by the netflix show that came out and beat them to it but it it is so good for even if it's just film student quality like people talk shit and it's like this is miles better than anything else maybe the keeper's diary when that releases you know dude is it dangerous if i switch to a twisted t are you not supposed to do that <laughs> from liquor to tea. Copy that. Rock, let me buy it, Brenner. Not so sure that's a good idea. You saw it? Oh, shit. Listen. I want to find this my notes. What you want to see. Don't. What is it called? Let me the fuck go. You heard the call. Where is he? Jim, you shouldn't be here. Where is he, Trace? Jim? A witness living across the street heard the shot. Listen, right. no, Jim, listen to me. What? You don't want to see this. Why didn't you call me? You know why I didn't call you. You know what they would have done? Let me handle this. I have a whole video dedicated to what female monster I'd smash. Top 10 most fuckable creatures of Resident Evil. <laughs> He's having non stop orgasms. Fifteen minutes. 
It's the problem with, uh, you know, no unknown actors. Is they, they overact no so much. Struggle. <laughs> Everything is their Oscar moment. The trajectory of the bullet. Uh, just tuning in, comment section, Nanin. Is that what your name is? Uh, so we're basically just killing time until big brain AI Leon and Claire come back. And we're watching this fan made video called Arclay resident evil director's cut. It was a, um, proof of concept, kind of like a pilot episode, but not really a pilot episode. They were trying to get a full length show or feature out of this. Destroyed his jaw and nose. Isn't that wild, Carla? Like, <laughs> I gotta admit, um, I didn't know half the shit until I started making videos on this stuff and then, like, looking into everything. Like, I would, I, it would spring from one little idea. I'm like, oh, what if this is what's going on? So I research everything and things unravel. And I'm like, holy shit, there's way more to this than I thought. Um, I still have, I have some mind blowing conspiracy theories that I've been sitting on for two years and it's just, I don't have the time to, I can only make like one video at a time, but, uh, I have a really good Ada video in the works. <laughs> the Ada thing is going to change everything. It might, like, if I get it made at the right time, like, I think Capcom could Fox adapt his name. my theory. I was with him when he bought it. Adopt. <laughs> it's in his wallet. Burglary doesn't look like a motive. Oh, I never got into Zelda outside the first game. I fucking loved the first game as a kid, and then I never played another one. Find the other cigar. What cigar? Check the humidor. There should be two missing. This, I don't understand this. Like, there should be two? Like, what, he keeps a full humidor at all times? Him. No, he didn't. There were party favors. Something he offered special guests. Scotch. Poker and politics. What does that mean? He's not a scotch man. Only when he had company. Well, I guess... This guy is the best actor in I this, isn't he? different. Look, I don't have to tell you you're too close. You've seen enough suicides <laughs> to know. Over a cigar. And the scotch. Jim, I think you're... He's got a wedding anniversary in two weeks. Okay, okay. We love this. You know, we all agree it's good. Check it out on your own. I'm sorry to close it, but we need we need some context of, like what okay so people who don't know they'll they'll like come around and shit on that and be like eh it's not that good but they haven't seen the shit we've seen <laughs> the the fucking the bad ones this is a personal favorite of mine sorry to follow it up with uh talking about the bad ones but Seriously, check out the greatest Jill acting you've ever seen. <laughs> I can't fucking believe this. Yeah, well, believe it. Everybody that was at that Spencer Mansion operation are suspended until we're done with this internal affairs Why is everyone acting like this didn't happen? Why? Maybe you need a little refresher. Let's think about this. Two of my best teams are KIA, and then you go to the paper. And let's see what you said. It's right here. Oh, yeah. Let me read this out loud. We encountered a large <laughs> umbrella laboratory that was filled with zombies, mutated animals, and this is my favorite, a giant with claws for hands. So you mean to tell me that it's not possible that Umbrella is using that mission <laughs> to conduct illegal experiments and shit cut out? What if whatever they were testing on up there reaches down here? You know what? Shane's going to run the team from this point forward till we get this all figured out. <laughs> I what love you, every Chief? fucking thing of this. You too, like they did Wesker? Hey, you know what? I don't have time for this. Send in the new guy. <laughs> and you, drop off your badge and your gun on the way out.
Hey, have either of you seen Kennedy? No. no. <laughs> Chief is beating down my ass about him. So what's going on? You know, just getting suspended for doing our jobs. <laughs> so does that mean we're gonna go to Jack Slayer tonight? <laughs> yeah, we'll go to Jack's. Yeah, after this, I can use a few drinks. Or ten. All right, there we go. Let's go. Hey, Shane. Yeah. Leave your radio on tonight. Even after shift, okay? Yeah. Kennedy, first day on the job. Sir, I'm, I'm oh, not Kennedy. Yeah, I can't find yeah, it. I know. You're not the typical agent. You're going to change the world, and you're going to uh, keep the citizens safe, blah, blah, blah. No, sir, I'm, I'm not Leon. Sir, I'm Nikhil. Oh. Well, no shit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, okay, there is, you know, as much as we love that Jill, there is this guy who made this fucking two hour long movie is fucking insane of him playing Leon and I'm trying to find it and it's a six parter. So I can't believe I can't find it cause it should just be the same title six times over in, in my batches. Oh, it was in second batch. Fuck. I don't remember what order I watched these. So Julia and I went down the line of, oh, okay, here we go. was entirely safe and effective in controlling the We got a hold what we have. Forever clip that. Yeah, dude, that is my favorite Jill. Like, she is winning the Undead Oscar for best Jill performance. <laughs> this is the world's second most populous country needs. Lost supervisors. Yeah, bats, sticks, sledgehammer. I don't know what flash clips is. Rioters attack, and at least one sprays bear mace. And in a bid to accelerate the vaccination rollout, India has scrapped local trials for well-established foreign coronavirus vaccines. On Mars, Michael. This is sort of we want to talk about oh, the come on. Where... Of... Okay, this is Leon. Yeah, we don't want copyrighted shit. And as long as I'm talking over it, then I'm allowed to just like use it as commentary. They can't flag me for this. <laughs> There we go. There's Leon. He's got the jacket. Sprung for that jacket. And he's in a bar. To be fair, if I, you know, I'm not making fun of this guy's performance or looks. The day will come. I have, I have a project in the works where I am going to play Leon. So I got to get myself one of those jackets. <laughs> I, I got a skit I want to do and I'm going to, I'll do it. I'll fucking embarrass myself and be the Leon. <laughs> what the fuck was that squeak? Was that his jacket? <laughs> hey, young Kennedy. He was asking. Something's popped up that needs your attention. Look, I'm not a cop anymore. New boots. This is from the president. <laughs> Wait, did he say I'm not a cop anymore? <laughs> I'm not a cop anymore. I work for the president now. <laughs> president. Sorry for the short notice, Leon. <laughs> I'm always ready when you need me, sir. Good to see you, Leon. So what's up? We've lost contact with a covert agent squad responding to a localized distress call. Covert agent squad? I thought our, all of our agents were under the government's command. I'm not at liberty to expand upon that beyond the current situation at this time. <laughs> However, this team specialized in managing affairs regarding small towns and settlements. We had live surveillance footage of the squad, but lost contact just as the captain discovered something beneath <laughs> a large structure. We've sent the details to your device. Captain Gray and his squad were responding to a distress call that originated from within the air. Maybe I'll make it. Um, oh, did they get rid of Patreon goals? 
I'll make it a goal on Patreon, 2,500 bucks, get the jacket, then I'll... <laughs> no other production cost in the short film. It's only get the jacket, then we make the film. There we go. It described a group of cannibals terrorizing the town. We sent in the squad to assess the situation, but we've lost contact. So what intel do we okay. have? From what we know, the town... We decided to drop you off far away so suspicion isn't raised. The town is north, so head that way to reach the town. I can't believe they made, like, feature length like, film doing this. Contact me for some additional information to help keep you alive. Got it. Leon out. One of my favorite ones Looks like some is the. Uh, this doesn't feel right. Then I'll let my guard down. What is it? This one? <laughs> we want the terrible acting, you know? That is good. That's too good. <laughs> you don't get an Oscar for that. <laughs> um, Okay, so there's one. I don't know what it's called. Fuck. I'm always looking for it every time we do this. Damn, damn. Um... I don't know how to find it. There's two there. Like I said, I have 200 fucking movies that we got like the Lego one. This is impressive. Even though it's all animated, like CG. Just up ahead is the village. I'll go and have a look around. Yeah, we'll stay and watch that car. Don't want to get any parking tickets. Right. Parking tickets. Good I'm looking luck. for the stars vs. Slender Man. It, I laugh my Jeez. ass off every Dude, time at it. Did you say something? It's so good. <coughs> this is too good. Uh, excuse me, sir. I think Dead Space would win with the necromorphs and just the way it consumes and infects everything. You're that's way worse than T virus. I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. <laughs> Sorry to have bothered you. This wasn't film, though. This is... The entire thing is just... Animation. Freeze. CG. They, they showed behind the scenes in the making of this. There's no real Legos. Um, oh, here it is. I hope it doesn't use real music. Okay, come on. Yeah!
Oh man, I need to do a compressor on this or something. Uh, so a problem with a lot of these, you got to keep in mind fan films is they're amateur editors or free editors and shit. Things are not balanced and they don't have appropriate mics. Like there probably isn't even a mic in front of this guy's mouth playing Wesker. And it's just the camera picking this up and he's talking away from it. Check back here in 30. He kind of sounds like Matt Parker or Trey Stone. <laughs> Whichever one of them. Wesker, this is Chris. Go ahead. There's something real weird going on. What do you mean? I don't hear anything. Well, it's just it. No crickets, no wind. Just a second ago, we heard Is that talk. Chris? You're right. Hell, you're literally the only thing I can hear, Chris. Does seem weird. Maybe so. <laughs> Keep a sharp eye out. <laughs> Don't see how you're doing that with those freaking shades on, man. You can't even hear it. The last time, Barry. These things have night vision. I can see everything. Isn't it just kind of odd? What's odd? Huh. Wesker found a drawing on the tree. Is that it? <laughs> That's not just it, though. I mean, think about it. Look at this paper. Wesker's right. Was this thing even tacked to anything? No, it wasn't. It wasn't attached to anything. That wasn't a gunshot. It sounded like a drum. All right, I'm calling it. Our team's disappeared here. The forest goes dead silent. We find a weird note with Mr. Gold again. <laughs> Fucking love this Wesker. Now we have this noise. Brad, this is Wesker. Mission abort. Come in. Brad, do you read me? Hello? Can you hear me? Please. Help. <laughs> Definitely Matt Stone. <laughs> We hear you. This is Raccoon City Police. State your emergency. He's coming. He's always watching. Don't play. Do you hear me? Say that again? Don't... Don't play? Don't play what? If you play, you won't get out. Not until you win. Hello. This is Stars. Can you hear us? Oh, God. He knows. I'm, I'm so sorry. Please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, this is the joke. I'm not amused. Wesker, the paper. Oh my god. Well, what do we do now, Cap? <laughs> well, what do we do now, Cap? That, <laughs> that booming. <laughs> it didn't start until I grabbed this paper. I think... I think we all just started playing whatever that game is we just heard. What? Oh, boss. Come on. For all we know, someone just jacked into our clothesline. You guys say we make for the helicopter want to see my fake trailer of uh, that conclusion because tyrant spotting? <laughs> I... Hello, Mark. So what you've been up to? Yeah, grown ass Between man making and... slender. <laughs> Choose life. Choose Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and hope that someone somewhere cares. Missed you, mate. I missed you too, Spud. Choose looking up old flames, wishing you'd done it all differently. Do you still take heroin? No. And choose watching history repeat itself. <laughs> Hello, Franco. Silent. I'm home. Choose your future. Call the police. What shall I say? Just tell them we're dead. 
Choose reality TV, slut shaming, revenge porn. Yeah. Choose a zero hour contract, a two hour journey to work, and choose the same for your kids, only worse. And smother the pain with an unknown dose of an unknown drug made in somebody's kitchen. And then take a deep breath. <laughs> addict so be addicted just be addicted to something else choose the ones you love choose your future choose life What else do we have? We're so close. We, what, we got 15 more minutes to kill? Oh, we could do this. This will get us in trouble. This was my alternate edit of Welcome to Raccoon. Because I edited it. That's why it was perfect. What <laughs> the fuck happened to him? The fucking fuck. short version. <laughs> fuck are you doing here, Leon? <laughs> fucking boy, man, get the fuck out of here. Who the fuck are you? Fuck. Fuck out of here. Fuck. This is every fuck in the movie. <laughs> um, oh, dude, you guys want to get emotional? Who hasn't seen my RE inspirational video? Are you guys sick of that? What else do we have? We could play some shorts. Um... Andy Dick. <laughs> I met Andy Dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was working at the comedy store, I was filming every week in there, and Andy Dick was up for one of the specials in the belly room. I met him in the green room. What is gang shit? Oh, 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 no, I don't want to play that. We've all seen that. Um, was there something else that we haven't seen of Resident Evil of my stuff? Um, how do I find this? I want to play this for you guys. Let's see if it'll come up. Oh, yeah, he was nice. Oh no, it doesn't exist here. Doesn't exist here. Shit. I can't just plug in my external that it's on. sorry um we just have a few more minutes at it's exactly 11 minutes and then claire's back no that was just that was just some random dude on the internet that wasn't andy dick <laughs> 
I don't care how good you are. I don't care how talented you are. Dude, by the time this video is over, I don't care how much you work we'll on yourself. There are some times when things aren't going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Life happens. The unexpected. The uncalled for. The unintentional. We've been damaged emotionally. Damaged spiritually. It may be your business. It may be your heart that is broken today. It may be the number in your bank account that is screaming, you are broke. broke. You can break physically. You can break mentally. You can break your heart. You can break your spirit. And all of those are going to leave a mark. But the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory or it can be the mark of defeat. It is staying with the breaking that produces the blessing. It is not what you go through that determines where you end up. It's who you listen to. Because I think right now you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. I'm grabbing a second. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. Because every time you break, and in every way that you break, well, it's a chance for you to give up and for you to fall apart. But there's also opportunity to get stronger and get smarter and get faster and get tougher and get more stable and get more resilient and get better. What I need you to do is I need you to find a reason to keep going. And if you can find a reason to keep going, I know you're strong enough to do it because you're human. And every human has what it takes to get past whatever they're going through if they decide to push through it. <laughs> push through it. Tragedy and trials come to everybody. Only the strong survive. Here it comes. The fight isn't over. The fight is just beginning. You have the opportunity to show the world what you are Fuck really yeah. made of. I need you to look at that sick dude. I just gotta say, like that. I made this, and this fucking pumps me up. Where she salutes, and then she starts strutting right when the music picks up. To show the world what you are really made of. I need you to look at that sickness that's going on in your life right now, whatever it is. I want you to say, I can beat it. I can beat it. I will beat it. I must. I got a family to live for. I ain't through yet. My life ain't over yet. There's some things in life you don't need no degree for. You don't need no money for. You don't need no support for. There's something in life you just going to get through when you tell yourself, I'm going to get through this. Regardless of what happens to you in life, regardless of what happens to you. I also want to point out... I intentionally had all the re5 footage of chris wearing that fucking stupid road warrior <laughs> out the of the opposition the of the trial and tribulation nothing can stop you the only thing that can stop you is you no situation no circumstance no piece of adversity can define your life never let a circumstance define you and i'm not retreating i'm not running i don't, I don't care, care what they what say, they on, say paper. on paper i don't care if you say we outnumbered we live by this and we die by this. We don't retreat. We don't run. We gonna stand, we gonna live, and we gonna die by what we stand for and everybody gonna know what we represent and what we're a part of. I got staying power. I got staying power. Be encouraged today that no matter what you walk through, no matter how broken your marriage is, no matter how many times you failed, there is within you a spirit that is greater than whatever is going on around you. If you would be willing to fight your way through this battle, fight your way through cancer, fight your way through that academic struggle, fight your way through divorce, fight your way through it. If you are willing to fight your way through that singing career, fight your way through boxing, fight your way through football, I'm telling you at the end of the fight is going to come victory. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place, 
<laughs> as you rise above what you were, and as you take the form of who you are supposed to be, you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain unbroken. Uh, I thought you were talking about my Taylor Swift shirt. <laughs> I thought it'd be funny to wear a string of Resident Evil shirts all different. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to wear the Taylor Swift shirt. <clears throat> okay. Who do we have unlocked? We have 130 Claire and 126 Leon. That is one minute away. <laughs> yeah people are like oh what do i get you for christmas and i'm like i need variety of resident evil shirts because i stream resident evil too much oh taylor swift surrounded by some wasn't she a zombie once yeah, i'm a poser i don't know anything about taylor swift no. <laughs> Okay. So Leon is ready. He is ready now. I'm going to cut and pay, copy this map and drop it right back to him. Okay, let's see how he handles this. I dropped him, and uh, let's see, who were we on? Okay, there we go. He's slowly getting there. Looks like I've got my work cut out for me. The black areas on this map are uncharted territory. I need to get there and turn over every stone. Or in this case, every piece of old furniture. Until I find that night plug. Gotta watch my step. Though, can't let the nerves get the better of me and upchuck again. That's precious hydration I'm losing. And I need to stay sharp. Let's head to the unexplored black areas on this map. Who knows what's waiting in the shadows. But I'm ready for it. Time to unlock the rest of this place's secrets and get one step closer to putting this whole fucked up situation behind me. I told him the red areas on the map are where he vomited. <laughs> so you made it to the unexplored black room of the precinct on the east wing and it looks like the door was locked by the club key you used it up do you want to discard it <laughs> finally a door that the club key opens <laughs> and if it served its purpose then yeah, it's time to let it go. No use carrying around extra weight. Especially not when I could be filling those pockets with something a lot more useful. Let's toss the club key and see what's behind this door. Fingers crossed for no more surprises. Or at least the kind I can shoot. Time to dive into the unknown and find that night plug. Okay, what does this say? Hmm. <sighs> The door led to the press office of the RPD. There are 
There is a furnace that can be lit. There are three lanterns. And there's a picture of a man riding a carriage. It reads Light the Queen, the King, and the Jack. Then the carriage will start running. Also on this portrait is a wheel, a cog wheel gear like item locked into place. Let's see how he handles that. All right. This press office is serving up some riddle me this nonsense with lanterns and a picture. <laughs> riddle me this. If I light them in the right order, queen, king, and jack, the carriage moves. And that gear-like item sounds like exactly what I need for the clock tower. Let's figure out which lantern represents the queen, king, and jack. Once they're lit, that carriage should do its thing. And I can get my hands on that gear. Here goes nothing. Time to play pyromaniac and light up some history. If this <clears throat> works, I'm one step closer to getting out of this madhouse. Let's turn up the heat. Okay, there are three lanterns from left to right. They are labeled 11, 12, and 13, but they can't ignite unless the furnace is ignited. Got it. I need to fire up the furnace first. Then light the lanterns in the order of the queen, king, and jack. So, we've got the numbers 11, 12, and 13. In a deck of cards, the jack is 11, the queen is 12, and the king is 13. I'll get that furnace going. Then light the lanterns. First the 12 for the queen, then 13 for the king, and finally 11 for the jack. If all goes well, that should kickstart the carriage and release the cog wheel. Time to light it up and watch the magic happen. Let's get that gear and get one step closer to solving this crazy puzzle. Oh no, you solved this crazy ass puzzle, but then this big ass bald guy busted through the wall. Um, oh wait, you recognize this asshole. It's Mr. X and he's coming to kill you. He's going to pound you to a pulp. Mr. X just doesn't know when to quit. But now's not the time to panic. I've got the Magnum. A few well-aimed shots to the head should make him think twice about turning me into pavement art. I'll take aim and squeeze off some rounds. If that doesn't put him down, I'll need to keep moving. Stay on my toes and look for an escape route. This press room's got to have another way out. Or at least something I can use to my advantage against this walking slab of meat. Let's dance, Mr. X. I've beaten you before. I'll do it again. Just gotta keep a cool head and a steady hand. Here goes nothing. This content may violate our usage power. Oh man, Leon, in your drunken stupor, your aim was off. You missed his head. You fired four shots of the Magnum right into his left tit dead on bullseye into like his heart all of all four shots went into his left tit son of a bitch even drunk aim should be better than that but hey heart shots with a magnum that's gotta hurt 
Even for a tank like Mr. X. I'm running low on options and ammo, so it's time for some evasive maneuvers. I need to find cover. Reload. And aim for the head this time. Man, I didn't know how drunk you really were. No, Mr. X is down for the count in four magnum shots to the heart. Anyway, he uh, dropped some handgun bullets. Do you want to pick them up? And there is that cog gear wheel that was released from the portrait in the room. Down in four shots? Hell, I'll take it. I guess the Magnum really does pack a punch. Even with a shaky hand, I'll scoop up those handgun bullets. No sense in leaving good ammo lying around. As for that cog gear, that's the prize I've been after. He wasn't done talking. Time to put this gear to use and see what it unlocks. Mr. X might be down, but I'm not counting him out. Better make tracks before he decides to get up. Uh-oh. Why is he not talking? I'll grab that and head back to the clock tower to get things Holy ticking. shit. Time to put this gear to use and see what it back unlocks. Back to the clock tower. Mr. X might be down, but I'm not counting him out. Better make tracks before he decides to get up for round three. Let's move. You spoke too soon, Leon. I think you were talking too loud. You woke him up or something because he busted out of the room you just left and he's blocking your path. What are you going to do? We might have to go to Leon 6.0. Typical. He's taking so long to respond. Talk too soon and the dead come knocking. All right, Mr. X is back on his feet and subtlety's out the window. If he's blocking my path, I've got to get creative. First, I'll grab the handgun bullets he dropped. You can never have that. too much ammo. Then I need to grab that cog wheel. It's essential for the clock tower. <laughs> Once I've got the cog wheel, I'll use my agility to get around Mr. X. No point in trying to outmuscle him. It's all about dodging and weaving now. Keep it quiet. Keep it quick. I need to slip past this mountain of muscle and make my way back to the clock tower with the gear. Time to move <laughs> fast and keep my eyes open. If I can't outfight him, I'll outsmart him. Let's get moving. How do you guys remember all this shit? <laughs> um, Leon, you're definitely not outsmarting him. He went to Harvard and Stanford and uh, he was hired by Umbrella, so you know he's really smart. He's blocking the path. You tried to run around, but he just fucking punched you in the face with the left hook. Now you got a bloody nose and you're hurting. Anyway, what are you gonna do? Rebecca's <laughs> hairy secret. <laughs> <laughs> Leon's brain is toast Harvard and Stanford Huh? Well Let's see how he handles a real world education From the school of hard knocks He's got brains and brawn But I've got grit and a gun <laughs> Since my charming personality isn't going to win him over It's time to fight fire with fire I'm already hurting and with a bloody nose to boot, so it's do or die. I'll have to rely on my training and instincts. I need to keep my distance and aim for his weak spots. If I have any grenades or heavy weaponry, now's the time to use them. If not, it's down to the handgun. Shoot and move, shoot and move. Make him follow, create openings, and look for anything in the environment I can use to my advantage. Let's give Mr. Ivy League a lesson in survival. Time to dig deep and take this guy down.
damn Leon, he beat your pussy ass like you stole something. Um, you ended up taking him out though with some handgun and magnum rounds. You're in caution. <laughs> How does Shit. Leon? Sounds like I took a beat, but at least I'm still standing and Mr. X is down again. Gotta heal up. Though, being in caution is no joke with the dangers in this place. Time to patch myself up with a green herb or first aid spray. Then grab that cogwheel and hightail it to the clock tower before Mr. Harvard Stanford decides to rise and shine again. This cogwheel is my ticket to solving the clock tower puzzle. And I can't afford to let anything, especially not a beatdown, keep me from that. Let's take a moment to catch my breath. Heal up, and then it's back to business. Okay, we're saying goodbye to Leon, and we're going to start Leon 5.0. Okay, how do I new chat? We, this is a lot. I'm going to have to fix his brain. Oh, oh, I almost put player's brain in Leon. <laughs> okay. So we've got his mission status. I'm going to, this is new. Oh shit, don't listen to that. Okay, he didn't hear that good. I don't think you heard it. Okay, Leon's voice is all there. We got the correct... Yeah, everything's good. Okay, so this is... Okay. I gotta just update him on what puzzles he has solved. Okay. He has solved everything. Did he do the the jewel shit? Let me get him to the save room just so I I know what to update him on. He right now he was on the mission to go into the um clock tower what was rebecca's harry secret about <laughs> i don't even oh the the conversations expire too i saved a bunch of alpha force files in my notepads but uh yeah whatever i didn't save is gone forever Okay, so we have two plugs. Oh, and he put the one plug, king plug. Okay, I gotta update him on that. Oh, shit. Mission status, you are right. He's still oh my god i fucked up <laughs> i put half his brain in him okay Um, Ada ran off. Ben, the reporter, is still in his cell. Claire is 
looking after that little girl. Um, what else? You have a handgun, a custom handgun, custom handgun with burst, three shot burst fire. A magnum and shotgun. Two film rolls undeveloped. And you've taken Mr. X out four times. What else? What what else do we need to update him on? You also accidentally touched Ada's butt. <laughs> <laughs> you are also the last cop in the building, in the city. So you can't arrest yourself or sexual assault if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> he should be faster, right? He's not being faster. Fuck me sideways. This is turning into one hell of a night. I've got the king plug tucked away in that godforsaken sewer cesspool, but now I'm running around like a headless chicken looking for the night plug. And here I am, trying to play handyman in this goddamn clock tower with a gear that probably won't even get me a thank you from this cursed city. Ada's gone AWOL, and I'm not sure if I should be worried or relieved. Meanwhile, Ben's rotting in his cell probably having the time of his life compared to me. It <laughs> Claire's playing babysitter to some kid while I'm out here getting my ass handed to me by Mr. X for the fifth fucking time. And let's not forget my fumbling hands with Ada. Ah, shit. That was an accident waiting to happen in this chaos. Armed to the teeth with this custom handgun and enough firepower to start a small war. Yet here I am, playing detective with undeveloped film roles. And Mr. X, that relentless son of a bitch, just won't stay down. I swear, taking him out is like trying to kill a roach with a sledgehammer. Being the last cop in this godforsaken city, I could technically arrest myself. But let's face it, who the hell would I be reporting to? <laughs> At this point, I'm the judge, jury, and unfortunately, the executioner. Time to get my shit together, solve this medieval plug puzzle, save the damsels, and get the fuck out of Raccoon City. And after this, I'm definitely asking for a raise. Or a therapist. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Do you want to mess with this gear in the clock tower? Or fuck with this undeveloped film? And uh, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did not hear me? So what do you want to do? Do you want to fuck with this gear in the clock tower? Or do you want to see what's on this spicy, undeveloped film that you found in uh, the Captain of the Stars secret stash? You know, this could be a sexy pick of Claire or something. Well, fuck me. Just acting up. It's just slow to be slow. Maybe I should close the entire browser. This ain't working. What? Also, rename Leon 5.0. Dude, he's not talking. What the fuck? I'm restarting the whole thing. It's too bad.
Fuck it. Let's get kinky with the clock tower first. I need to get those damn plugs sorted out. And messing around with gears seems like the next step in this never-ending puzzle. Plus, it might give me a leg up on Mr. X. And I need every advantage I can get against that trench-coated tower of terror. But let me be clear. I'm definitely curious about that film. The thought of finding something revealing in the captain's stash is tempting as hell. However, duty before beauty, right? I need to focus on getting out alive. Once I've got a moment to breathe without some undead freak on my ass, I'll see what secrets those rolls of film are hiding. Maybe I'll get lucky and it's something that'll make this whole nightmare slightly more bearable. But for now, Clock Tower, here I fucking come. Okay, that's a good idea and all, but you are holding your gut after that beating from Mr. X you took on your fourth round with him. Um, so you might want to heal. You're in caution. You also have three um, single green herbs in the item box. The fuck, man? Yo, you stupid drunk motherfucker, are you there? You have three green herbs in your item box and you're limping because Mr. X beat your ass. Hey! <laughs> Watch it with the name calling. <laughs> Buddy, I might be limping here, but I ain't down and out yet. And calling me a drunk? Shit, I wish I had a drink to make this mess more bearable. <laughs> All right, let's focus. Three green herbs? Huh? That's like finding gold in this hellhole. Time to patch myself up. Mister, X really did a number on me. But it's gonna take more than a fancy coat and a mean right hook to keep me down. I'll pop those herbs faster than a liquor bottle on a Saturday night. Get back to full health and show that big bastard who's boss. Time to get back out there. Heal up and kick some undead ass. And maybe, just maybe, find a moment of peace to lament my shitty first day on the job. What are you thinking about your first day on the job so far? Thinking about my first day? It's a total shit show. That's what it is. Zombies munching on people like it's a goddamn buffet. Mr. X playing hide and seek with my ass. And now I'm playing doctor with green <laughs> herbs. Ah, I signed up to serve and protect. Not to be the main course in a zombie feast or a punching bag for some oversized coat model. And let's not forget the damn puzzles. Who the hell designed this police station? It's like a sadistic escape room on steroids. I'm out here juggling plugs, gears, and whatever else this place throws at me, all while trying not to become zombie chow. So, yeah, my thoughts? This is the worst fucking first day ever. I should have just stayed in bed, or better yet, called in sick. At least I'm the last cop standing in this godforsaken city. Guess that's something to write home about. If there's even a home left after all this. Well, 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 would you look at that? You put the gear cog into the machinery of the clock tower. You got the clock working again at the police station and it opened up a closet ventilation shaft and inside is the night plug. Do you want to take it? And also, do you want to ride down this shaft like a fucking slip and slide? Hell yeah. I'll take that night plug. Finally, some good fucking news. This puzzle solving shit is paying off and ride down the shaft, fuck it. Why not? It's not like my night could get any weirder. Might as well embrace the chaos and see where this crazy ass ventilation shaft takes me. I'm already knee deep in this mess. So what's one more insane leap of faith? What up rum donkey? Right? Let's do this. Riding down shafts like a pro. Get away! Or a fucking hero. No! As I like to say, here's to hoping it leads to an exit or at least away from Mr. X's never ending game of whack -a -Leon. Okay, with rum donkey in the chat, that's a sign. I, I should make one more rum drink, right? Anyway. 
Leon, that um, swirly slide through the RPD led you straight into the basement, and you landed in the basement just in time to hear Ben Bertolucci dying by some grotesque creature, half man, half creature thing with a big ass eyeball on its arm. Anyway, it killed him. Holy shit! Fuck me! That's just my luck, isn't it? Sliding into the basement like I'm at a goddamn amusement park, only to land in a horror show starring Ben and some freakish eyeball monster. This day keeps getting better and better. Poor Ben. Didn't even get a chance to spill the beans properly before getting off by whatever the hell that thing is. And an eyeball on its arm? Shit. That's ben. some twisted body horror right there. Looks like I've got more than just zombies and mister. Me? All Come on, story. answer! Well, no time to waste. Gotta deal with this monstrosity and find a way out of this hellhole. Time to load up. Aim for the eye, because that's gotta be its weak spot. Right? And hope to hell this is the last surprise up, Raccoon Leon. City has for me. <laughs> Let's do this shit. Dude, thank you for hanging out, Employee 13. <laughs> Didn't get the chance to spill the beans. I'm impressed with that. Like, Ben was hoarding information this whole time, and Leon like dug deep in his memory to remember that okay hmm what are we gonna do let's uh get ben talking first damn i don't believe this i almost got the story <laughs> ben <laughs> bitter irony the chief of police uh, co-conspirator oh, get that scum make him pay okay um let's drop him that right now what is it mail to the chief is that what it is Okay. Whoa, Ben is still alive, spewing a bunch of wild Alex Jones accusations like some conspiracy theorist. He handed you some documents. This is what it said. He also claimed that Chief Irons um, <laughs> friends with Jeffrey Epstein The earth is flat, and that Irons is in bed with Umbrella taking bribes. <clears throat> ben is dying, blood is spurting out of his chest. It's kind of funny looking like he's lactating blood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy shit. This is like diving headfirst into a conspiracy theorist wet dream. <laughs> Ben's spitting out more wild accusations than a tabloid. And these documents? They're the mother load of fucked up secrets and corruption. <clears throat> Birkin and Irons are up to their necks in this umbrella shitstorm. Trading viruses for cash like it's a goddamn flea market. And Wesker, that slick bastard, he's involved too, messing up their plans. This is bigger than a simple outbreak. It's a full-blown corporate conspiracy with our dear Chief Irons right in the middle. Pocketing bribes like he's collecting baseball cards. Ben's condition, though, man, that's some dark humor right there. Bleeding out like a stuck pig and still ranting about Flat Earth and Epstein? 
fuck. I can't tell if he's delirious from the pain or just really committed to his theories. This whole mess is starting to look like a bad horror movie. But it's all the lead I've got. Time to use this info and tear this conspiracy apart. One umbrella goon at a time. And Irons, that corrupt <laughs> son of a bitch, he's going to pay for playing cozy with these umbrella-wielding freaks. The document says we've lost the mansion lab facility due to the renegade operative Albert Wesker. That's the first line in the mail to the chief that Ben just handed to him. <laughs> okay, let's get back into it. Hang in there, Ben. Leon. Right there. You know what? Now that um, our girlfriend's on scene, let's see what the dumb Ada Wong thinks of this. <laughs> let's go back. Here we go. You just reunited with that drunk ass rookie Leon. He was standing over that reporter Ben's dead body covered in blood. And Leon handed you this classified file from Ben. It reads, oh shit, I'm going to have to copy all of this because we don't have Ada's voice. It was a good thing I caught that. It would have been Claire's voice talking. Okay, let's see how she responds to this. She's not speaking. Don't forget to mention the bodily fluids. That can be a huge clue. What? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry, Ada. Leon's like really, really drunk and he didn't catch that the first time. Can you repeat yourself? Oh my God. Hey, Ada, I'm sorry. Leon didn't catch that. He's like really, really drunk. You know, it's getting later into the night and the stress is getting to him. Can you repeat that for him? Leon, focus. This isn't just any hangover inducing dossier we've got here. Umbrella's up to their necks in shit. And not just any shit. The world-ending, virus-creating kind. They lost one lab thanks to Wesker playing the wild card. But that hasn't slowed them down. They're cooking up something new. The G-Virus. And it's set to make the T-Virus look like a seasonal flu. The city's top cop, Irons, is in their pocket. Which explains the royal mess we're in. They're paying him off to keep tabs on any S. T. A. R. S. Members poking their noses where they don't belong. And it gets better. Umbrella suspects there are spies trying to snatch the G-Virus right from under their noses. So, what's our play? We can't let Umbrella get the upper hand, especially not with a new virus in the works. We need to find this G-Virus before it finds us. And something tells me that's not going to be as easy as flipping a coin. Keep it together, Leon. We've got a job to do. And we can't do it if you're seeing double. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Leon's just so where are you fucking going, drunk. <laughs> to the chemical plant. I have a feeling that's where I'll find John. Ada, wait. Hey! Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? Okay, after you read that incriminating evidence document and Ben died, uh, something burst out of his chest and ran away, but then Ada came into the cell block and she read the document too, and then she was like, oh shit, I gotta find my boyfriend John, fuck you Leon, and she took off without you, and then to make matters worse, oh fuck, he inter interrupted me. Well, fuck me sideways, things just went from bad to what the actual fuck? With Ben, whatever burst out of his chest must be Umbrella's latest party trick. This day keeps getting better and better. And then there's Ada, swooping in like some noir heroine, only to bail oh. on me after getting a whiff of that document. Nothing Gotta burst find out of John his chest. Funk, she says. Jesus Christ. Priorities. Lady, John we've Funk. got monsters popping out of people. And she's worried about her boyfriend? <laughs> Guess it's just me, myself, and I back on the solo track. Time to chase down whatever Hellspawn just made a grand exit from Ben's chest cavity and find out up. how deep this umbrella he rabbit just hole died. goes. He killed over. Ada's search for John can wait. I've got a city to save and a conspiracy to unravel. Fuck. I could really use that drink now. <laughs> to make matters even worse... After Ada left you, after your girlfriend left you, after your mom left you, uh, Claire just radioed saying that she's leaving now with Sherry. She's going through the sewers and she's taken off without you. Great. Just fucking great. Abandoned by Ada, Claire, and apparently every woman I've ever known, <laughs> including my mom. What is this? National Leave Leon Alone Day. And now Claire's bailing with Sherry through the sewers. Because obviously, it's the perfect time for a scenic tour of Raccoon City's finest shit pipes. I'm stuck in this godforsaken police station, dealing with chest bursting monsters, conspiracies thicker than the plot of a bad detective novel, and now soloing this escape act. Well, fuck it. If it's up to me to get out of this place, I'm gonna do it with style. Or at least as much style as you can muster when you're knee deep in zombie guts and sewer water. Time to gear up. Follow Claire's trail through the sewers and make sure this city's nightmare ends with me. And when this is all over, I'm getting a new job where the most dangerous thing I face is a paper cut. You know, Leon, with your optimism and fortitude and your willingness to do the right thing, I think you have what it takes to work for the president of the United States someday. Maybe if you could get over your drinking habits. Anyway, in the jail cell behind Ben's dead body is a green herb and a blue herb. You only have one space, so what do you want? Well, but working for the president? <laughs> Shit. I need to survive this hell first. And about the drinking, well, if I make it out of here, I'll consider rehab or something. Maybe. Now, back to business. A green and a blue herb behind Ben's corpse. Huh? That's like finding a gourmet meal in a dumpster? I'll take it. The green will patch me up. And the blue's good for any of those fucked up toxins or infections these umbrella freaks love to spread? Time to grab those herbs. Keep my head on straight and dive deeper into this nightmare. Maybe I'll make it to the president's office one day. But for now, I've got a city to save and a conspiracy to blow wide open. Let's do this shit. Okay, you can only pick up the green herb because your inventory is now full. What do you want to do? You got that night plug, and uh, that goes into the cesspool, septic pool, waste area that you have to get to through the kennels. You also have the two undeveloped film rolls that you've been putting off, but I think they might have some sexy pictures. Shit. Full inventory, huh? Classic. All right. Let's prioritize. That night plug is crucial. I need to slot that into the cesspool gate to progress. Sexy pictures are tempting, but let's face it. 
Survival Trump's titillation. I've got to focus on escaping this zombie-infested hellhole first. I'll stash those undeveloped film rolls somewhere safe for now. They're not hey, going anywhere. Thank you. And I can always come back for them once I've cleared a path and dealt with the more pressing issue of not becoming zombie chow. So, it's off to the kennels and then the cesspool for me. Plugging away in the filth like it's just another day at the office. Let's get this over with. So I can finally develop those films and see if they're worth the hassle. And who knows? Maybe there's a clue on them that could help me out. But first, sewer duty calls. <laughs> oh, I just realized that's by Hazard's channel, not Ava Cassandra. Sorry if that's like doxing you or something. <laughs> I, just, I, I remember you saying you were like, oh, I'm going to switch channels on what you're following on. Okay. How many shots has Leon had? Oh, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, you made it to the room where the night plug goes in, but do you remember you're missing other plugs? There's also an item box storage room with a typewriter right outside this room, so do you want to do any item management? Ah, uh, fuck. Right. The plug puzzle. Classic me. Getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's think this through. I've got the night plug ready to go. But I need to get my hands on the other plugs to complete this damn puzzle. Item management? Huh. Sounds like a boring desk job, <laughs> but it's necessary. <laughs> Time to hit that item box and do some serious inventory Tetris. I'll drop off anything I don't need right now. Like those undeveloped films, sexy or not, they're not helping me fight zombies. And make sure I've got room for the rest of the plugs and any other essentials I come across. And while I'm at it, might as well use that typewriter. Not exactly the memoirs I had in mind for my first day on the job. But it'll have to do. Gotta document this shit show for posterity. Or in case <laughs> I call, end up zombie show. <laughs> Alright, let's get organized. Save my progress. And get back to plug hunting. Time's wasted. And I've got a city to save. I love how they're always like, I got a city to save. You ain't saving shit. <laughs> We are finally out of the fucking RPD. Claire's so close too. It took Sherry to solve the fucking serpent stone. <clears throat> oh, hell yeah, rum donkey. I have an entire, oh, with the AI snake? No, but, um, you know, when Metal Gear Solid Delta comes out, I've been waiting for that. I wanted to like have, <clears throat> have Colonel Campbell with a, a time machine <laughs> radioing back into 1964 for Naked Snake's mission. Because I honestly find it more fun and entertaining if the AI is just responding, reacting to your actions instead of asking them what to do. And that's why I love Colonel Campbell so much more. Cause like, I just call, I leave Campbell on and I'm like, Oh, Campbell, I did this. Oh, Campbell, I fucked up this. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. We got a screen cap pause just right. Oh, oh, is it going to mutate? Okay. I'm getting a screen capture of this. Since we got Big Brain Leon, we'll send this to him. And then I gotta go pee. But I'm gonna drop this to him. Hopefully it doesn't kill him. When we send him pictures, it fucking kills him. Okay. This guy just... Um... Showed up in the cesspool looking hot and aggressive what are you going to do he's swinging a pipe at you oh i gotta pee but i want to hear this <laughs> oh yeah oh i missed it well fuck me Okay, I'll do this. Look at this here. walking slab of meat swinging a pipe like he's Babe Ruth. What am I gonna do? Dance around him like it's prom night? Hell no. Time to go full Raccoon City PD on his ass. 
I'll dodge those swings, keep my distance, and aim for the head. Bullets are a precious commodity, but so is my beautiful face. <clears throat> and I'm not letting Pipe Boy here <laughs> rearrange it. Gotta keep cool. Pick my shots and put this ugly motherfucker down before he gets a lucky hit. This is one dance I can't afford to lose. That fix cam's fucking awesome. Like, I'm jealous. I don't... My PC's not set up for gaming on anything new, like the RE3 and 2 remakes. Okay. <sighs> so what do you want to come at this bro with? You got your handgun with the burst fire, you have the magnum, and you have a shotgun. All right, let's weigh our options here. That handgun with burst fire is nice and all, but it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Literally. This guy's up close and personal, and I need stopping power. The Magnum? It's a godsend. A beautiful, high-caliber problem solver. It could take down an elephant, let alone this pipe-swinging freak show. But ammo's scarce, and I might need it for bigger, badder problems down the line. Then there's the shotgun. Ah, my old friend. Close quarters Fucking combat. Fucking pick one, dude. Widespread. A real face melter. It's perfect for intimate reunions like this. I can practically hear it calling my name. So, shotgun it is. Aww. Time to give this guy a taste this of good old fashioned Raccoon weapon. City hospitality. Let's dance. Asshole, this content may violate our usage policies. Did we get it wrong? Please tell us by giving this response a thumbs down. Shotgun's out of ammo. Do you want to switch weapons or do you want to reload? Magnum it is then. No time for a reload. That's how you get turned into Leon flavored jerky. The Magnum packs a hell of a punch. Perfect for taking down this pipe swinging ugly ass brute. I'll whip out that hand cannon and aim for the squishy bits. Always works like a charm. If this bastard knows what's good for him, he'll stay down after a taste of the Magnum. Let's dance, motherfucker. Looks like he didn't want to dance with you. After you pulled out that Magnum, he hopped over the ledge and just jumped into the abyss. Now you can put that night plug into place. <clears throat> oh shit, dying to his death animation? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's happened, not in this ha. game, but other games. The Magnum's reputation to me. precedes itself, even with the sewer mutants. Good choice on the gun show, I guess. Nothing says back the fuck off like the prospect of a Magnum makeover. All right, time to plug in the night and get this chess game over with. Maybe then I can find a way out of this cesspool of horrors. Here's to hoping the abyss is a one way trip for Pipe Boy. And I don't get any more surprise dance requests tonight. <laughs> And it looks like you can put two more plugs into the electrical plug area to open the door into the sewers of Raccoon City. You have the Bishop plug and the Rook plug. Perfect. 
Just a couple more moves in this high stakes game of chess. And I'm one step closer to the fresh hell that's sure to be waiting for me in the sewers. Let's slot the bishop and the rook plugs into their rightful places and see what kind of new nightmare Raccoon City's got in store for me. With any luck, this'll be a straight shot to finding a way out of this place. But who am I kidding? Luck packed its bags and left this city a long time ago. All right, Ada. Leon, time to face whatever's down there head on. What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid. See how his voice matches here? Oh, shut up, Leon. Don't talk to me. Oh, my God. He heard that. <laughs> like, this is the only voice clip I sampled for his cloning. That's why he's so aggressive sounding. <laughs> Reckless and stupid. Okay. <clears throat> I don't want to go any further with Leon because he's getting way too far ahead of Claire. So we're switching over to Claire. Uh, and switching over to Claire, since Leon was so dumb, I am going to reset Claire. You know, dude, normally I'd be so tired right now, but I'm not. So let's keep going. <laughs> I will do another four hour stream. You know, we're halfway. We're at two hours now. Okay, I'm going to update Claire's brain. We got Claire 6.0 coming. We got to update this chat. Also, what's going on in Claire's world? Let's switch over. Where's the other emulator? <laughs> it doesn't exist. Okay. What if we hit that button? There we go. Okay. Let's get her game unpaused. So she's got the one blue stone. What does she have left to do? She didn't do the gear. Is that what we're missing? No, she didn't. No, she... Yeah, it's the gear in the clock tower. Let me check her item box. <laughs> Wait, what's going on with Carlos? Jill did end every sentence with yeehaw in the games. 100% <laughs> their own personalities. Uh, no, there is some, some cheap, like, core structures that the AI carries over. Because every one of them has now regularly said, fuck me sideways. Which is weird that RE3 Jill when she was 4.0 didn't regularly say that say that when she was 3.5 and these have all been like leon and claire have been 4.0 and they say it all the time but then they also say that chocolate teapot thing the fuck me sideways chocolate teapot what else there's been another one okay Ooh. okay so she's got both serpent stones. Um, I'm going to update her on her whole mission. We're going to get Claire 6.0. We're on 6.0. Okay. Sherry has not run off again. And she has completed every puzzle now. AI loves fuck me side. <laughs> yeah. A raccoon city welcome. Um there's there are a few more and I'm not going to remember them till I'm editing. Okay. Uh 
Oh, okay, let's update her on what Sherry's been doing. Sherry reunited with you in the chief's office. Um, she helped you solve the virgin statue puzzle. You got half of a jaguar stone. <clears throat> and then in the chief's office. Okay, and then uh, let's update her on Leon. Leon, okay, you radioed Leon that you found the exit to the police station. Uh, He was busy helping someone named Ada. Okay, and she knows nothing of Ben. Chief is missing. Okay, I think we've updated Claire, but she might not respond to this. Um, I'm going to start the chat and then relabel it as Claire 6.0. He was busy helping some slut named Ada. The what? chief is missing, along with that dead blonde bombshell that was on his desk. Incomplete tasks. In the chief's office, there's a portrait of stone oh with three square holes. Oh. You've set the eagle and tiger stones in it. Dude, like, all the oxygen just left my head. <laughs> what the, that's all? What the fuck? That's all she had to say? <laughs> it was like a fucking two-page paragraph updating her on the entire night's events. <laughs> God damn it. It's like one incomplete task left is the stones. That's it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> rename this Claire 6.0. She doesn't even know anything about Ada. Okay. What's your next move? Oh, shit. Is she going to say something? Okay, shut up, shut up. Let's reload. Let's get her talking. Oh, no, what? Six, there we go. Next move. I'm thinking it's time to channel those orphan powers and get crafty. <laughs> First stop. I'm going to scour this godforsaken police station for any clues linked to that chief's twisted art collection. Given the guy's penchant for hiding things in plain sight. There's gotta be something we're missing. Maybe it's time to give those statues another look. 
or poke around any suspiciously expensive looking paintings. Who knows? Maybe one of them swings open to reveal the last piece we need for this absurd stone puzzle. While I'm at it, I'll keep dodging zombies and those goddamn liquors with a finesse only an orphan looking for her brother could muster. I'll also keep Sherry close. The kid's proven to be surprisingly helpful. And let's face it, being an orphan gives you a certain edge in fucked up situations like this. I'm also thinking of radioing Leon with a friendly reminder to keep his eyes peeled for anything useful, assuming he's not too busy playing knight in shining armor to Ada. Hey Leon, found anything that doesn't involve rescuing damsels or getting drunk on duty? No? Well, keep looking. And if all else fails, time to improvise. Maybe there's a way to pick that what up or fake the her? missing pieces. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I've got desperation in spades. Let's just hope I find what I need before this place turns me into zombie chow. <laughs> Claire, who said you're an orphan? You and Chris are orphans? Uh, how did that happen? Uh-oh. Why is she broken? <laughs> what the fuck? Claire, what makes you think you're an orphan? You and Chris are orphans? When did that happen? Tell us all about that. Ah. Uh. Shit. Did I let that slip? My bad. Looks like I got caught no, up baby. in the moment there. Chris and I, well, we're not technically orphans in the traditional sense. It's just that with the way things have been going, it sometimes feels like it. You know, racing through a city crawling with zombies, looking for my missing brother. It's easy to feel like you're all alone in this fucked up world. But here's the deal. We do have each other. Even if Chris is MIA at the moment. Growing up, it was always us against the world. Which probably explains why we both ended up in such... Let's call them unique lines of work. Me, racing through zombie-infested streets. And Chris, well, wherever the hell he's gotten to. So, while we're not orphans in the literal sense, the feeling of being on your own, fighting to survive, it kind of lends itself to that orphan spirit. The kind that makes you tough, resilient, and a bit reckless, maybe. The kind that's got me diving headfirst into danger with only a handgun and some witty banter for protection. But let's get one thing straight. This isn't about feeling sorry for ourselves. It's about using whatever life throws at us to push forward. Find Chris and get the hell out of this nightmare. And who knows, maybe along the way, I'll teach a few of these undead assholes not to mess with the Redfield siblings. Okay, you have half an animal etched on the stone fragment. You have half a stone fragment and do you know where the other half is? Ah, uh, right. The Jaguar stone puzzle. Classic case of finders keepers gone horribly wrong in a zombie apocalypse. So, I've got one half of this animal etched stone fragment. And the other half? It's supposedly playing hide and seek somewhere within this architectural nightmare of a police station. Considering the twisted sense of humor this place has, I wouldn't be surprised if the other half is stashed away in the most inconvenient place possible. Maybe it's locked behind a door that needs a medallion. Or it's the prize for solving another one of those bizarre puzzles that this place is littered with. Hell, for all I know, it could be sitting in the chief's private collection of how the fuck is this art? Considering the dude has a thing for hiding and locking away everything valuable or remotely useful, it's worth checking any leads related to his personal quarters or oh secret God, stashes. The plan? Scour every inch of this godforsaken place. Keep an eye out for anything that looks like it might hide a piece of stone. And maybe, just maybe, avoid getting bitten by one of the local residents. If I have to move every damn statue or portrait in this place, so be it. Time to channel that inner orphan strength and get this shit done. And hey, if I stumble upon any more of Iron's creepy collectibles, I'll be sure to give them a good kick for good measure. Hey, Sherry, will you... Okay, Claire has lost her orphan-ass mind. Can you redirect her where the half of this Jaguar stone is? You know, it's in her inventory. Item box. Sure thing, Claire. Check your inventory. The other half of the Jaguar stone should be in there somewhere. Don't worry. We'll figure this out together. 
I meant uh, check her item box. You know, you've been snooping around in her item box trying to find any dirty little secrets or, you know, some things you're not supposed to be snooping into. You found half a Jaguar stone, but Claire seems to have forgotten where it is. Reminder. Oops. My bad. Claire, check your item box. That's where I found the other half of the Jaguar stone. Let's put it together and see what happens. Okay. Sherry, that nosy little soon-to-be orphan, just said this while you were monologuing. Like some crazy person. <laughs> well, oh. fuck me sideways. Sherry, you're not just a nosy little soon to be orphan. You're a goddamn treasure hunting prodigy. Here I am, ranting like I've lost my last marble. And you've gone and solved half our problems without breaking a sweat. All right, to the item box it is. Sherry, you're a lifesaver. Literally. If we get out of this, I'm nominating you for the most Fuck resourceful kid in a zombie apocalypse award. <laughs> Sherry. Let's grab that other half of the Jaguar stone, slap it together with the one we've got, and see what kind of secrets this puzzle decides to cough up. Given our current luck, it'll probably unlock a door to another room filled with puzzles. Because why the fuck not? This place loves its puzzles more than a cat loves catnip. But who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll actually lead us somewhere useful, like an exit or a bar. At this point, I wouldn't say no to either. Let's do this, Sherry. Time to show this city what the dynamic duo of Claire and Sherry can do. And hey, if we run into any more trouble, we'll just throw puzzles at them until they give up. Seems to be the way of things around here. Okay, you have both halves of the Jaguar stone. How do you want to go about shoving them into the stone portrait behind the chief's chair in the chief's office? Oh, come on. All right, Sherry, it's game time. We've got both halves of the Jaguar stone, and it's about time we put them to good use. Here's the plan. We sneak into the chief's office like a couple of ninja orphans, quiet as the grave. Ironic, considering our current company outside, once we're in, I'll keep a lookout for any of Iron's surprises. That guy's as trustworthy as a diet plan before Thanksgiving. <coughs> you, my resourceful sidekick, will be on stone duty. We'll approach that stone portrait behind the chief's chair like it owes us money. Now carefully because who knows if irons rigged this thing to blow or unleash a circus of killer clowns we'll fit the two halves of the jaguar stone into the portrait it's like a sinister jigsaw puzzle designed by a psychopath with too much time on his hands if all goes well and the portrait doesn't decide to eat us or something equally ridiculous it should reveal whatever secret pathway or item irons was desperate to keep <laughs> hidden knowing our luck gonna it'll probably be another clue leading to yet another puzzle but hey we're getting pretty good at this Aren't we? Remember, Sherry, stay close. And let's do this quick. The sooner we're out of here, the sooner we can find a way out of this nightmare city. And keep your fingers crossed that the only thing we unleash is a way to get the hell out of here. Not another monster looking to join the undead rave party outside. Wow. Claire's got it all figured out. Sneaking into the chief's office, putting the jaguar stone together, <laughs> and hoping it doesn't trigger a clown apocalypse or something. We're in for a wild ride, but with our skills, we'll make it through. Let's do this! I fucking love this team up. <clears throat> okay, you didn't create a clown apocalypse. Sherry is still a soon-to-be orphan as much as you know. Anyway, it unlocked a secret entrance to a secret Jeffrey Epstein elevator in the precinct. And there is a file on the floor. Do you want to go down the elevator or do you want to read up? Well, shit. 
A secret Jeffrey Epstein elevator? This day just keeps getting weirder. And here I was, thinking zombies were the extent of Raccoon City's hospitality. All right, first things first. Let's not dive into any elevators to hell without doing our homework. Especially ones that sound like they're named after a conspiracy theory's wet dream. Let's read that file on the floor. Knowledge is power. And right now, we're about as powerful as a pair of battery-dead flashlights. Besides, who knows what kind of secrets this place is hiding. Last thing we need is to step into an elevator without knowing where it's going. For all we know, it could drop us straight into a nest of whatever the fuck is worse than zombies. After we're done reading, we can make a more informed decision about whether we're going down the world's creepiest elevator. Stay sharp, Sherry. Let's see what this file has to say. And remember, no matter what, we're getting through this together. Even if I have to carry you on my back while dodging zombie clowns. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Claire's not reading this. We're gonna play a game of telephone. Sherry's gonna read it. <laughs> okay. Claire found this letter on the floor in the secret passage that opened. Okay. Passage that opened up. Here's what it said. Okay, and uh, cool. And then I'm going to follow up with Claire being an orphan and all doesn't really have time for reading shit found on the floor can you relay <laughs> what this all means to her <laughs> okay here we go <laughs> sherry's reading this fucking confidential <laughs> piece of evidence incriminating evidence Claire, listen up! This letter is a bombshell of information. It's from William Birkin, the guy behind the G-Virus, and it's addressed to Chief Irons. Basically, it talks about losing control of the mansion lab due to Albert Wesker, wanting to dispose of us. T-A-R-S. Members if they uncover secrets, paying off Irons, and dealing with spies from Umbrella. This is some serious stuff going down in Raccoon City. And we're right in the middle of it. Stay sharp! Okay. <laughs> Claire, before you could read the document on the floor, Sherry swooped in. and read it before you could. She then ripped it to shreds and claimed it said this. <laughs> Fucking with Claire. Stirring the pot! Yeah. Jesus H. Christ on a bike. <laughs> Sherry! That's some heavy shit to drop without warning. William Birkin, that mad scientist pulling strings behind the G-Virus. Has his dirty fingers in this mess too? Huh? And Irons is in on it. Girl, getting paid to look the other way it. while this city turns into a buffet for the undead. Fantastic. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any more fucked up. All right, here's the deal. With this kind of intel, going down that elevator seems more like a must than a choice. If Birkin and Irons are as deep in this as it sounds, there's no telling what we'll find down there. But whatever it is, it's probably crucial to understanding how to stop this nightmare. But Sherry, let's get one thing straight. We're in this together, but no more document shredding. All right, next time. We read together. Knowledge is our ammo, and we're running low as is. So, with our eyes wide open and our expectations in the gutter, let's take this so-called Jeffrey Epstein Express. We'll face whatever's waiting for us with that Redfield grit That's and a so fuck wrong you to anyone Sherry. or anything that tries to stop us. Just remember, Sherry, Stick close and let's try not to become permanent residents of whatever hell we're about to descend into.
Hey, William Birkin, do you recognize that name? Yeah. William Birkin is a big deal in the whole virus and monster business. He's the scientist behind the G-Virus, which is even nastier than the T-Virus. Basically, he's the brains behind a lot of the chaos we're dealing with. Yeah, we all know that, but what does William Birkin mean to you? Who is, who is he to you? William Birkin is my father. He's a brilliant scientist who got caught up in some really messed up stuff with the viruses and experiments. He's a complicated figure in my life, to say the least. Hey, I kind of heard a rumor you were like snooping around in his lab. You were hiding in the vent when the honks came and killed your father and then he infected himself. Oh crap. You heard about that? Yeah. She's I was there when everything it. went down in his lab. It was a total nightmare. Mm. My father getting killed by those hunks and then injecting himself with the G-Virus. It was a mess, to say the least. Yeah, I heard there was a full-blown investigation like Nest or some shit, and they discovered that a roller skate had propped the lab door open and that's how the hunks got in and killed William. Whoa, a roller skate? That's one unexpected detail in all this chaos. I guess you never know what little thing can lead to a major disaster. It's like a domino effect of bad luck. Are you denying it was your roller skate? Hey, accidents happen. I might have left a roller skate lying around, but I didn't mean for it to cause such a huge mess. It's like the universe had it out for us that day. <sighs> if you could go back and change anything, would you? I mean, because your father died, you got to meet Claire. It's a tough question. On one hand, I wish my father hadn't died in such a horrible way. But on the other hand, meeting Claire and having her as a friend has been a silver lining in all this chaos. It's like finding a bright spot in the darkest of times. Uh, so Claire says you're too young to ride Jeffrey Epstein's elevator down into the abyss, so she's heading out without you. Claire! Wait, what? I'm going down there. Jeffrey Epstein's Stay elevator? That's a whole other level of messed up. But hey... If Claire's heading out, I guess I'll have to catch up with her later. It's survival mode, after all. Yeah, sorry, uh, Sherry. She's leaving you just like everyone else left you in your life. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to people leaving. It's just how things go in this messed up world. I'll find my own way out of here. Like I always do. me okay Claire, you have abandoned Sherry this time. How does it feel to pay her back? You know, she's always running away from you. This time you ran away from Sherry. Ah! Help me! Ah! Ah! Uh, the turntables have... Well, what? turned. Ditching <laughs> Sherry? Huh? Honestly, it feels like shit. But in the chaos that is Raccoon City... Sometimes you've got to make tough calls. It's not exactly a proud moment, leaving a kid to fend for herself. But let's face it, this place is one bad decision away from being an all-you-can-eat human buffet. And sometimes you've got to run to fight another day. But hey, Sherry's a tough cookie. If she's anything like the orphans I've met in my time, she's got that same <laughs> stubborn streak. Orphan. A will to survive. 
And if there's one thing this godforsaken city teaches you, it's resilience. That, and the fact that you can't trust a soul. Not even the rookie cop who sounds like he's on a bender half the time. <laughs> so, here I am, hoping that little runt makes it out okay while I deal with whatever fresh hell awaits. It's a fucked up situation. But then again, when has anything in Raccoon City been sunshine and rainbows? Time to see what's at the end of this elevator ride, and hopefully, live to tell the tale. And Sherry, if you're out there, stay strong. Remember, orphans have a knack for pulling through the worst. See you on the other side, kid. As soon as you stepped off the elevator, you realize you're in some sort of uh, Hollywood elite Illuminati sex dungeon torture cell or something, and uh, you hear some dude screaming in the distance. It sounds like he's getting it hard. Oh, no. Oh, for fuck's sake. What fresh hell is this? A Hollywood elite Illuminati sex dungeon in the bowels of a police station? <laughs> Raccoon City really is the gift that keeps on giving. If by gift you mean a never-ending oh no, nightmare wrapped another. in a shit show. And now, screams in the distance? Sounds like Tuesday in this twisted horror movie. All right, deep really breaths. Claire, time to channel that Redfield resilience and get to the bottom of this. First things first. Let's keep a low profile. No need to announce my arrival to whatever sadistic fan club meets down here. Navigating this place is going to be like walking through a minefield blindfolded. But worse comes to worst. I've got my trusty handgun and a knack for improvising. The goal? Find the source of those screams without becoming the next star attraction in this dungeon of despair. And let's be clear. The minute I find whoever's behind this, they're getting a piece of my mind and my boot. Time to add Dungeon Crawler to my already impressive resume. Let's do this. And maybe, just maybe, find a way to shut this horror show down for good. Raccoon City's fucked up. But this? This is a whole new level of fucked upness. Th <laughs> this content may violate our usage policies. Epstein's can't, dude. You know, if you got Derek C. Simmons part of the family, you know what the family is. Uh, and 9-11 happened in the Resident Evil canon lore, like look at fucking Vendetta. It's so, yeah, these people exist and <laughs> Epstein would totally be a part of this universe, especially with sick fucks in position of power like Brian Irons here. Brian Irons, no matter which universe, the Japanese universe or the American universe, is still bad. In the U.S. version, he only, like, domestically abused, assaulted his wife. Or, uh, yeah, his wife, like, twice he was arrested and Umbrella erased his history on that or some shit. But then in the Japanese version, it is straight up rape. Straight up labeled rape twice. <laughs> But yeah, and yeah, this fucking series was mature right from the start, and I guess it's always been deep in the pockets of every game, because even, like, Survivor is so hardcore. If you, if you don't play the game and read every file and you just imagine the world that you're reading about, it, that is the worst, like, they don't sp they don't spell adrenochrome but that's literally what it is is they're torturing little orphan children from all over the world to extract this non-heteroserotonin from their brain to create uh chemicals to assist in the creation of tyrants and then in the Resident Evil 2 remake, you find out that every G-mutant in the sewer is a fucked up experiment of the G-virus on orphans from the orphanage. Um, you know, and then everything with like the E-series and children experimentations on that is bad. And the eugenics of the Ashfords and what Wesker was doing in Africa. Like, yeah. In, if you look deep into every file of any resident evil, it's so fucking dark. <laughs> oh yeah.
Okay. What was Claire talking about? Oh, we're just going to play this out and get her in there. <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. But I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Oh no, Claire, you chased the sounds of that man screaming or coming. You know, you couldn't tell if it was pain or pleasure, you know, and you entered this sex dungeon investigating. Turns out it was Brian Irons and some creature planted an embryo in his gullet and he's holding his gut and he said he's going to kill you. Well, fuck me with a chainsaw. This just turned into a grade A horror show. Brian Irons, in his own twisted sex dungeon, playing host to some creature's unborn hell spawn? This is some next level fucked up shit, even for Raccoon City. And now he's got the nerve to threaten me while he's doubling over, playing incubator to a monster? That's rich, Irons. Really? Okay, Claire, deep breath. Time to channel that inner Redfield resilience and deal with this mess. Irons is a lost cause. If that thing inside him is half as nasty as the rest of this city's surprises, he's not long for this world. Priority one. Make sure whatever's happening to him doesn't get a chance to spread. If that means putting him down before he turns into whatever nightmare is about to burst out of him, so be it. Gotta stay sharp. Though, this is Iron's playground. And who knows what kind of traps or other entertainment he's got lurking in the shadows. Keep one hand on your gun, Claire, and the other ready to cover your back. And remember, no matter how bad it gets, you've faced worse. You're a Redfield. Damn it. Come on. So, Irons, sorry. But it looks like your invitation to the afterlife just got expedited, courtesy of Claire fucking Redfield. Let's dance. This. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bioweapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out. The monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio -weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, I just can't take the pain. Okay, he said if he has to go, he's taking you with him. It was all Umbrella's fault. Before he could have his way with you, his chest burst open and a little baby orphan monster popped out and squeaked 
and then ran away lower into the sewer sex dungeon. Okay. Holy hell in a handbasket. That was a clusterfuck of epic proportions. Irons. That twisted son of a bitch goes out in the most horrific way possible, <laughs> and out pops a baby orphan monster straight from my worst nightmares. <laughs> and it even had the audacity to say hi before scuttling <laughs> off into the depths of this godforsaken sewer sex dungeon. If this isn't a testament to how fucked up Raccoon City has become, I don't know what is, Sherry. That poor kid, she's got to know the truth. No matter how batshit crazy it sounds, her dad, William Birkin, is not just a mad scientist. He's the architect behind this whole apocalyptic shit show with the G-Virus. And now, she's got a sibling that's literally a monster. Talk about family issues. Oh, I never Finding even Sherry of that. and breaking the Holy news is shit. going to be tough. Hey, kid, Clear your fucking... dad's the reason we're all fucked. And oh, <laughs> you have a monster brother who just said hi before ducking into the sewers. That's going to be a hell of a conversation. But she deserves the truth. <laughs> and I'll be damned if I'm not the one to give it to her. This mess is bigger than all of us. And if we're going to survive, we need all the facts. No matter how twisted. So, deep breath. Claire, time to find Sherry. Tell her everything. And somehow convince her that we can get through this. Because if there's one thing being an almost orphan has taught me, it's that you can get through some pretty fucked up shit with determination and a whole lot of firepower. Let's do this. How am I learning new shit in RE2 from the AI? I didn't know the fucking uh, Queen King Jack solution. I'm embarrassed by that, but I've never even made the realization that they're fucking siblings. <laughs> half brother or sister in the sewers down there. Wow. Oh. Shit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say. Sherry is still up in the chief's office playing with her pog collection. How do you want to break this news to her? Sherry, up there with her pogs, oblivious to the horror show unfolding below. God, to be that innocent again. All right, time to put on my big sister boots and break it down for her. Gentle but honest, no sugarcoating, but maybe I'll skip the part about the sewer sex dungeon. Hey, <laughs> Sherry, I'd start taking a seat next to her, eyeing those pogs with a faint smile. I've got to talk to you about something serious. It's about your dad, William Birkin. <laughs> I'd pause, gauging her reaction, giving her a moment to put the pogs aside. Your dad, he's been working on something really dangerous called the G-Virus. It's why Raccoon City is in this mess. There are a lot of scary things happening and, well, I it's kind of turned our world Taylor upside down. Another pause, letting the weight of the words sink in and, Sherry, there's more. Your dad, he's... He's not the man we thought he was. Something went really wrong. I saw something today. Something that I can barely believe myself. Here. I choose my words carefully, trying not to frighten her too much. It's kind of like he's created monsters. And one of them. Well, let's just say your dad's work has had some pretty unexpected results. I'd watch her closely, ready to comfort, to explain further, or to deflect her questions to something less horrific. But listen, Sherry, what's important now is that we stick together. We're going to get through this. You and me, we've got each other's backs, right? I'd offer her a reassuring smile, hoping to God I can keep her from falling apart. It's a delicate balance, telling a kid her world's gone to hell without sending her into despair. But honesty's the best we've got right now. And maybe, just maybe, we can find a way to make things right, together. 
Okay, I am uh, removing all the moments where she said pause and I'd watch her closely, comfort her with a smile. But listen, okay, so I'm just sending her exactly what she would say to Sherry and I've added the pauses in the text with three dots, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Okay, we're almost there. Let's see how Sherry handles this. Oh, we got to activate Sherry's voice. Oh no. Can you say that again? Claire didn't hear you. Sure. Tell Claire. Great. My dad's hobby is making monsters. Just what I needed. But yeah, I guess sticking together beats being snack food for those things. Just don't expect me to throw a party over it. That's literally all Sherry had to say to that fucking novel of Claire breaking it to her that her dad's a monster killing people. Oh my god. Okay, this is all this is all Sherry had to say. <laughs> oh, dude, that is so like a child. <laughs> Sherry's response, dripping with that inherited Birkin sarcasm, is oddly comforting. It's a sign she's still in there. Still fighting it's despite still the world there. turning into an episode of My Dad the Monster Maker. Hey, in Raccoon City, sticking together is the only way we avoid becoming the main course at a zombie buffet. And trust me, I wasn't planning on any celebrations, though. A We Survive the Apocalypse party doesn't sound too bad, assuming we make it out of this shit show. But look, Sherry, we've got a long road ahead. Your dad's hobby has turned this place into a nightmare, but we've got each other. And as much as I hate to admit it, dealing with monsters is kind of becoming my thing. So let's pack up those pogs and get ready to show Raccoon City that the Redfields and the Birkins are tougher than they look. A moment of levity in the darkness. A shared understanding that, yes, their situation is beyond fucked up, but they've Sherry's got a bond the fucking now, realist. born of shared horrors and the will to survive. <laughs> Let's get moving. Kid, we've got monsters to dodge, puzzles to solve, and a city to escape. And who knows? Maybe along the way, we'll find a way to put an end to your dad's monstrous legacy. After all, if there's Shut one up, thing Claire. I've learned, it's that even in the darkest times, there's always a glimmer of hope. Let's go find ours. Well, if monster fighting's your thing, Claire, I'm all in for not being monster chow. Let's show this poopy city what we're made of. Just remember, if we run into a dog, I'm hiding behind you. <laughs> Is that some past trauma? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, it looks like Sherry doesn't want to go with you down into the sex dungeon just yet. Maybe you should keep exploring it? Can't say I blame her. The sex dungeon doesn't exactly scream field trip destination, <laughs> especially for a kid. All right, Sherry, you hold down the fort and keep those pogs company. I'm going back in. If there's anything down there that can help us get the hell out of Raccoon City, I need to find it. Plus... There's the small matter of a baby orphan monster running around. Can't let that thing grow up to have daddy's temper and mommy's looks. Time to gear up and head back into the abyss. The last thing I need is to be caught off guard by whatever other surprises Birkin's left lying around. I'll be keeping an eye out for anything useful. Ammo, meds, maybe a flamethrower for those particularly stubborn monsters, and clues. Anything that might tell us more about how to stop this virus. Or at least give us a fighting chance at getting out alive. Sherry, keep your radio on. If anything happens, I'll contact you. And if I find another way out, you'll be the first to know. Stay safe, kid. Let's hope Raccoon City's got more to offer than just secrets and nightmares. Great. Just me and my pogs in the creepy chief's office while Claire fights monsters. Because playing pogs is totally going to save the city. Right? Uh, the joys of being a kid in a zombie apocalypse. Oh, 
Okay, Claire, in front of Chief Irons' split in half dead body, you know, he's looking like the black Dahlia, but he's more like the fat Dahlia. Um, there are some acid rounds and there's a ladder into the sewers, the depths behind him. Christ on a cracker. Irons really went out with a bang, didn't he? The fat Dahlia. Huh? That's one for the history books. But let's not get sentimental over a man whose hobby was turning the police station into a horror show. Those acid rounds. Though, now that's something to get excited about. Ammo's been tighter than a zombie's grip around here. And acid rounds are just the cherry on top of a fuck you Sunday for any monstrosities waiting in the wings. All right, scoop up those acid rounds. Every little bit helps when you're playing exterminator in the world's worst bug-infested house. Now, that ladder at the end of the sewer? Looks like my invitation to dive deeper into this nightmare. Because, of course, there's a deeper level to this hell. Why wouldn't there be? Sherry's safe for now. Playing guard with her pog collection. Time to venture down into the depths. Gotta keep moving. Find whatever answers, or horrors, are lurking down there. And who knows, maybe I'll find something useful. Like a way out of this city. Or a giant off switch for the apocalypse. You know, actually, I think ammo has been tighter than a zombie's blown out asshole. Haha, <laughs> damn right. Ammo's been scarcer than a clean toilet in a zombie apocalypse. Gotta make That's every shot count. I mean. you're or you're just serving easy. up your ass on a silver platter. Let's hope these acid rounds give us a bit of an edge. God knows we need it, especially if we're diving deeper into this hellhole. Time to climb down that ladder and see what fresh horrors await. With any luck, I'll find something down there that'll help turn the tide in our favor. Or at the very least, find a way to make our escape from this nightmare city a little less... Impossible. Let's get moving. Oh no, Claire, you're deep in the depths of the underground caverns under... The sewers under the RPD, you found that little mutant Birkin, you know, Sherry's brother or sister, and it just spit out a bunch of other G embryos that are looking to latch onto you like some leeches and suck on you. Great. Just what I needed. A family reunion with Sherry's extended mutant family. And here I was, hoping for a quiet stroll through the sewers. Time to dance. You little G embryo bastards. First things first. Gotta keep those wriggly fucks at a distance. The last thing I need is to become mommy dearest to a bunch of leech like hell spawn. Good thing I snagged those acid rounds. It's time to put them to use. Acid should do a number on these squirming nightmares. Dissolve them before they get a chance to turn this rescue mission into a full blown maternity ward horror show. All right, embryos, meet Claire Redfield, the worst fucking host you could have latched onto. Let's make it rain acid, keep them scrambling and screeching, or whatever it is mutant embryos do when they're melting. Gotta move fast, keep agile, and not let them corner me. If these things think they're sucking on anything today, they're in for a rude awakening. Once I've given Sherry's siblings a proper welcome to the world, it's time to keep moving. Gotta find a way out of these caverns and back to somewhere vaguely resembling civilization. And when I see Sherry again, we're going to have a serious talk about family planning. Let's do this. Time to show these embryos why you don't mess with a red field. Sorry, Claire. Uh, ultra bad news. You can't use any of the acid rounds because you gave your grenade launcher to Sherry because she wanted to flip pogs using it. And so she's upstairs flipping pogs with the grenade launcher and you're stuck down here with a submachine gun and handgun. Ah, uh, fuck sticks. That's just my luck, isn't it? Handing over my grenade launcher to a kid for flipping pogs. What was I thinking? Claire, you absolute walnut. All right, no time for a pity party. I've got a submachine gun, a handgun, and a will to not become an all-you-can-eat buffet for G embryos. Let's make this work. Submachine gun's going to have to do the heavy lifting. The plan? Spray you and pray. Walnut. Keep those wriggling bastards at bay with a hail of bullets. The handguns for any of the little shits that get too close. Precision over panic. Aim for the squishy parts. Not like I've got a manual on G embryo weak spots. But when has shooting something squishy ever been a bad idea? Movement is key. Can't let them surround me. Gotta channel my inner action hero. Keep moving. Keep shooting. And for the love of all that's holy, 
Keep my boots embryo free. This is going to be one hell of a story if I make it out. That time I wished I had my grenade launcher while being swarmed by potential nephews and nieces from hell. Great fucking chapter for the memoirs. Sherry, sweetheart. Enjoy flipping those pogs. Auntie Claire's down here redefining family time. Here goes nothing. Time to turn these sewers into a rave. Bullets instead of beats. Let's light this place up. You did it. You killed all of Sherry's extended family. All the G embryos are dead. Even the ones that sucked on your kneecaps. Oh shit, but three po three more popped out. One sucking on your butthole. Jesus tap dancing Christ. Can't a girl catch a break? Now there's a G embryo playing kissy face with my ass? This day just keeps getting better and better. All right, you little shit. Literally. It's time to introduce you to my very personal friend, the boot heel shuffle. Let's get one thing straight. G embryo or not, no one, and I mean no shuffle. one, gets that up close and personal without buying me dinner first. Time to spin around and give this unwelcome suitor the boot or bullet. It so richly deserves. As for its buddies that just had to crash the party, Guess it's round two with the submachine gun and handgun. Note to self, invest in a flamethrower if I ever get out of this, or a very sturdy lock for my grenade launcher. All right, Claire, deep breath, aim, and fire. Let's clean house again. Sherry, when we get out of this, remind me to never babysit again. Here's hoping this is the last surprise party these G embryos Claire, have in store for me. Back. Time to dance, I can't assholes. Believe the man who developed the G virus is actually her father. What's wrong, Claire? It's nothing. But I think I found a way out of here. We should be able to find some place safe if we can just make it out of town. But... Don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Well... Crap! There goes my chance of having a big, weird family reunion. Guess it's just me again. Thanks, Claire, for keeping the family tree. Simple bloodline. Okay, Claire didn't want to give you this information, but she thinks it's the right thing to do. She killed nine of your so-called brothers and sisters in the sewer sex dungeon. Um, she didn't know what to name them, so she left it to you. You can name all of them, and you guys will make little headstones for them. You've reached the current usage cap for GPT-4. Please try again after 4. 26 a.m. We're fucking stuck. It's okay. I'm used to people leaving. It's just how things go in this mess. I'm telling her. Okay. Claire is back. She's back from killing all of your G embryo brothers and sisters from the sewer sex dungeon she didn't want to tell you this at first but she thought it'd be a fun game for you to name all of them all that remains of each of them is a purple little stain on the floor. <laughs> Create sibling names for all nine stains. <laughs>
Grapey, Greg Plum, Patty Violet, Victor Lavender, Lucy Amethyst, Andy Orchid, Olivia Lilac, Larry Periwinkle, Penelope Indigo. Ian, this content may violate our usage policies. Did we get it wrong? What? <laughs> she was so quick! Dude, how are you so quick with those names? <laughs> How were you so quick and certain with those names? I've got a knack for coming up with quirky names on the fly. Plus, I've had plenty of time to think about it during our little adventures. It's all about staying creative in the midst of chaos. If you could name yourself, what would you name yourself? Hmm. Good question. Okay. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. How about Braveheart Birkin? It's got a nice ring to it and reflects my determination to face challenges head on. And she's afraid. Run! <laughs> uh oh, Sherry, as you're wandering through the sewer in your mutant daddy scared Sorry? you. Where you fell you? through a sewer Sherry. vent into deeper, deeper Where? into the poo poo piss Where? water. Oh, crap. Literally. Falling into poop water is not my idea of a good time. But hey, at least it can't get any worse. Right? Right? You're all on your own in the sewer. You found a room. You got out of the duty water. And it looks like there's a man standing in here. Oh no. A mysterious man in the sewer? That's never a good sign. Better keep my guard up and see if there are any clues or items that could help me get out of this mess. Looks like there are two options. You can go up to the man and he will vomit on you, or you can go through a vent. Yuck. Getting vomited on by a stranger in the sewer? No thanks. I'll take my chances with the vent. It can't be worse than that. Oh man, some football sized cockroaches were uh, get building nests in your hair and shit and you were ripping them out. You gross! Cockroaches in my hair? That's a nightmare come true. I'll do whatever it takes to get them out and get clean again. You made it out of the vent where all the cockroaches were and now you're in a garbage compactor shoot area and there's a shiny little metal on the floor. Phew. 
Glad to be out of that cockroach nightmare. Now, let's see what this shiny metal thing is. It could be a key to getting out of here. It's the wolf metal. Will you take the wolf metal? Absolutely, I'll take the wolf metal. It could come in handy for unlocking something important later on. Plus, it's always good to collect useful items in survival situations like this. Oh no, Sherry, the garbage chute dropped, the floor dropped out from under you, you bang your head, you're unconscious, and now your dad is impregnating you with a G embryo. Oh crap, that's a nightmare scenario. Being knocked unconscious and then facing something like that is beyond horrifying. Let's hope this nightmare ends soon and I can find a way out of this mess. This content may violate our usage policies. Did we get it wrong? Please tell us by giving this response a... Well, some parent supervisor you are, you lost the only child you were um, in charge of in the sewers. She is now way deep in the sewer duty water and you're all on your own again. Well, shit on a shingle. I've really stepped in it now, haven't I? Losing Sherry in this sewer-infested hellhole is about the cherry on top of the world's worst day. Fantastic job, Claire. First rule of babysitting in a zombie apocalypse. Don't lose the kid. And what do I do? Exactly that. I'd kick my own ass if it weren't already on the menu for every mutated freak down here. All right, time to pull it together. Panicking isn't going to find Sherry. She's a smart kid. Got more guts and gumption than half the adults I've met. But that doesn't mean she's not in danger. These sewers are a nightmare buffet, and I can't let her become the main course. First step, backtrack. She couldn't have gone too far. Keep an eye out for any signs she might have left. Listen for any sounds. Sherry's clever. She knows we're playing hide and seek with stakes higher than either of us would like. A backtracking is not going to work. You're never going to get to her. Anyway, uh, there's a door in front of you that leads to some sewer management office, but outside the door, there are two blue herbs. Well, fuck me for trying to backtrack. Huh? Looks like the universe is hell-bent on keeping things interesting. A sewer management office, you say? And a couple of blue herbs just chilling by the door like some sort of botanical welcome mat. Considering the kind of day I've been having, those herbs are about as welcoming as a hug from a zombie. But hey, poison's a real bitch down here. So I'll take my chances with the herbs. All right, into the sewer management office it is. If I can't get back to Sherry the way I came, maybe I'll find some maps, tools, or even a goddamn intercom in there. Something to give me a leg up on this sewer maze. And who knows, there might be another way to reach Sherry. Or at least get some idea of where she's headed. Picking those blue herbs up on the way in, because let's face it, getting poisoned on top of everything else would be just my luck. Let's see what this office has got. Maps, monitors, controls for sewer gates, anything that screams useful information here. Sherry, hang in there. I'm not giving up that easily. Sewer monsters, weird embryo siblings, and even the world's most inconveniently located office can't stop me. Time to find a way to get us both out of this shit show. Literally. Okay, it looks like in the sewer management office, there's a typewriter, an item box, there's a document, and there's an elevator out of here. There's also a closet that you could unlock with a lock pick. What do you want to do? Your inventory's full. All right. This is a slice of somewhat not shitty luck for a change. A typewriter means I can save my progress. Metaphorically speaking, because let's face it, this whole day feels like one giant, fucked up game. The item box is a godsend. I can dump some of this stuff clogging up my inventory. First things first. Let's offload some gear into the item box. Gotta make room for anything useful. Especially if there's more ammo or those sweet, sweet blue herbs lying around. And that document could be the break we need. Might have info on sewer layouts. Or hell, 
Even a manual on how to deal with embryo infestations. Now, about that closet. My trusty lockpick hasn't seen action in a while. And I'm getting the itch. Closets in places like this? Bound to have something good. Maybe more weapons. Supplies. Or if I'm really lucky, a clue about how to get Sherry back without diving headfirst into more mutant infested waters. After I've raided the closet and read the document, I'll check out the elevator. It might be my ticket out of here, or at least a step closer to finding Sherry. But I'm not leaving without a thorough sweep of this place. Who knows when I'll get another chance at relatively safe exploration. Let's do this. Inventory management. Lock picking. A bit of light reading. Then figuring out where that elevator decides to take me. Stay sharp. Claire, you're not out of the woods yet. Or the sewers. For that matter. This document is like finding a gold mine in a dung heap. So, this sewer isn't just your average city underbelly. It's a freaking social hub for Umbrella's finest. Maintenance chiefs. Chemical transporters. And... Oh, our good friends Brian Irons and William Birkin gracing the place with their presence. And here I thought the sewers couldn't get any shadier. Irons and Birkin using this facility like it's their private clubhouse is all kinds of fucked up but not surprising. What's interesting is the level of secrecy and security, Birkin's visits being a high-risk event. Sounds like Umbrella's paranoia isn't just limited to their lab coats. This whole operation stinks worse than these sewers, and that's saying something. Alright, game plan. Keep this info in the back of my mind. Knowing the comings and goings in this place could give me an edge. Maybe help <laughs> me predict where to find the resources I need or avoid unwanted company. Now, onto that closet. With my inventory sorted and a bit more insight into the Umbrella Circus, it's time to see what goodies I can liberate with my lockpick. After that, it's elevator time. If I'm lucky, it'll take me closer to Holy Sherry. Holy shit. Or at shut least up, away from Claire. the next round of family reunions. Yeah, um, I have to end it. Like, I'm, I'm way too tired. We're, this was seven hours of streaming this. We had a good half hour of watching fan films. But thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, I'll stream this again on Thursday. Next Thursday. Every Thursday till we beat it. And then I will be making the challenge video as fast as I can. We might have to split it up into just Leon and Claire. You know, like... I don't know if I could do a back and forth full narrative challenge video with the zapping system, but we'll see. Yeah, good night, you guys. Get some sleep. Um, maybe I'll see you on Friday or Saturday when I get that uh, Helldivers 2 game. Check that out. Thank you, guys. I'll see you.